this is Ruben from uh, the Property Solvers. Um, welcome to another Property Solvers podcast. I'm here with um, James Durr. How are you doing, James? I'm good, Ruben. Thanks. Good, good, good. Um, okay, so uh, today um, we're going to have another informal conversation with regards to the, the current property market, um, buying and selling in the current property market, and uh, where we think things are at in terms of um, us as a, as a home buying company and uh, auctioneer. And um, yeah, just wanted to kind of have a, a, a kind of general conversation, really. So, um, James, do you want to maybe start off um, giving some thoughts on, on, on where you think we're at at the moment? Um, we're, we're at the end of February 2024 when this podcast is being recorded. Yeah, sure, Ruben. Yeah. Um, I mean, this 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 year obviously um it's it's a lot slower market i mean obviously we've got experience in the estate agency market um selling properties through our estate agency also we first hand experience of the auction market um through a mix of selling sort of vendors properties and selling our own properties um and there has been a definite notable slowdown um, since since maybe this time last year. Um, and I mean, really now the only stock that you will sell is stock that's, that's priced competitively. And I think for sort of vendors out there who are, who are looking to sell their properties, um, it's, it's, it's a transitional market. And I think you need to be sort of ahead of the curve rather than be behind the curve. Um, we feel myself and and Reuben um, haven't spoke about it earlier uh, that prices are dropping, um, and basically, if if, if you want to sell, yeah, you need to price it at a level that's going to attract interest, um, and that's your best chance of, of 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 getting a quick sale. I mean, if you price it anywhere above where it should be, you'll barely get any viewings, and and that's been the experience that. That we found. I mean, what's your views on it, Roman? Yeah, I mean, um, you know, we're we're, we're generating um, hundreds of leads every month organically. Um, so we're kind of, you know, not we don't have to go out there and actually advertise for our leads. We're, we're getting them coming direct to our website. Um, so we get to speak to um, a lot of vendors that are just out there. Some of them are just curious. Some of them just want to know a little bit more about you know, where their property would stand in the current market. But other than others are genuinely motivated to sell. What I'm noticing is that people still seem to uh, have the mindset that they can achieve the same kind of price as what was possible in the kind of 2020, 2021 market, when, you know, we were still going through this whole kind of COVID period where interest rates were, you know, ridiculously low. Um, you yeah. know, I'm based in South London, and you know, we were seeing um, properties getting bid up by kind of 20, 30 grand increments. You know, because people could afford to do that because their mortgage payments weren't going to be too much extra. Um, but now, with you know, I mean, I mean, they're not. You know, historically, they're still you know reasonably low. Um, but the, the, it seems a lot of sellers on kind of realizing that that's where the market is at uh, and realizing that they do have to be a little bit more realistic about their pricing. And so when we go up to a seller and say, okay, well, we think your property is worth X, a lot of them aren't willing to accept that because they're still in this mindset that their property is gonna be worth what it was in 2020 and 2021. Um, and another issue with that is that it's the old classic where an estate agent would tell someone that their property is worth X, amount and it, it gets very hard to kind of shift that your mindset away from that i mean we've been through it ourselves james i was going to say maybe yeah. talk about the 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 is this we're going back 10 years now um but we've we've fallen into that trap ourselves where you know uh, an agent this is before we were running our own estate agent an agent told us that we could get um a certain amount of money for a property and we were quite transfixed on achieving that price. And then the market just eventually just taught us a lesson, basically, you know. It's, it's yeah, I mean, a bit of it's, it's, problem, it's, isn't it? But yeah. It's, it's, it's very easy to fall into that trap. And obviously, when you've done a lot of work on a property and you feel like 
you know, it's, it's high spec. You, you want to achieve the this, this sort of maximum value that you can. And sometimes if you've got a state agent's promise and you're like another, I don't know, like for, for us in the case of selling London property, you know, it could be 50, 100 grand. It's a lot of money and it's very alluring to, to try it, you know. Mm. But what can happen is if you do try and go for like the big um, home run with the price, you just end up like reducing it over many months. And that's happened to myself and Ruben like many times selling properties. And we've kind of learned the hard way that you, you need to just go in, make it competitive. If you find that like the market is not re- reacting well to the price that you've, you've, you've put it on the market at, you need to cut it mm. and cut it reasonably fast. You know, like, we find in the, if there's not like a lot of interest in the first week or two of listing a property, then more than likely that property is overvalued and like you're better taking, taking action early. And just to go back to one of the points that you made about sort of interest rates and, and how interest rates like historically are not, are not that high. I mean, that's true. I mean, long-term rates are a lot higher even than than what they are now. Um, But household debt is way higher than it's ever been historically. Mm. So actually, like, the the amount that people are paying on their mortgages and the percentage of their salary that's going towards mortgage repayments, like, is higher, you know? Mm. Um, Like, if you look at all the metrics in terms of, like, um, average house price to, to salaries. Like I think in London, they're up around like 11 times like the average salary, which historically is, is, is really overinflated. Yeah. And I have been surprised at how long the transition from a seller's market to a buyer's market is taking. Like as sort of a state agent and auctioneers, like it, it can be pretty frustrating when you're deal, dealing with vendors that, like you said, are still stuck in like 2020 2021 um but yeah it, it seems to be taking longer than it should and, and my only guess why that's happening is because so many people are still um on fixed rates you know they've they fixed a couple of years ago like very low interest rates and the pressure isn't really there yet to kind of need to go and sell quick mm-hmm. um and maybe a lot of the ones that are looking to sell quickly is is the landlord market because a lot of them have been hit by a double whammy um, and this goes for us as well which is basically interest rates rising but also the section 24 tax changes um meaning that you can no longer write off interest payments um against against your revenue mm-hmm. and so effectively i mean you get a 20 percent um you get you get twenty percent to write off, but I mean, you know, when when you've got massive interest rates and they're basing your tax bill on revenue, and um, it can quickly turn pretty nasty for landlords. And we've definitely seen a big rise in the amount of landlords looking to sell quickly and also to just to to exit the market. Really, yeah. I mean, even if you are able to increase the rents, um, I don't think they're catching up enough um to to really kind of make a personally owned property portfolio viable these days i just think it's 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 still really tough to keep it going so a lot of people don't have a choice but to to sell i mean many many landlords have been in the industry since like the early noughties that kind of thing you know so that what they have on their side is um a good amount of equity in their portfolio so they are able to sell um um, and then, you know, maybe just go out and buy new stock in a limited company structure. You know, that might make more sense doing doing it that way, you know. But actually yeah. leaving a portfolio in your personal name. I mean, it can make sense if you've maybe got a small portfolio and you're able to stay under the basic rate threshold. But I know there's 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 quite a few. But even then, it, it, even then, I mean, to make a portfolio cash flow at the moment with the interest rates, forget yeah. about section. 24 it's it, yeah it's still very difficult you know and and a lot of people you'll hear a lot of like gurus say you know buy property never sell you know remortgage sort of reinvest off the off the debt 
Um, yeah, I don't, I don't think that's as viable anymore. No. Um, I do think personally that like sometimes it does make sense to sell. You know, if if the portfolio is not cash flowing, and by reducing your debt, you can make it cash flow better and flip into a more tax efficient structure. Then why would you not do that? Yeah. Um, and I also know, like, obviously, there's been a lot of these, like, um, tax avoidance um, structures touted um, about sort of moving in, into an LLP um, and then into a limited company. Um, I mean, what, what do you think, Ruben, about these sort of um, um, I mean, we, we actually looked into it ourselves, didn't we? Um, I think it was quite a few years back, actually, when this whole Section 24 thing was was playing out, or the initial phases of it were. Um, I just wasn't sure about it all, to be honest. And I kind of thought, well, maybe it just might make sense to just restructure, uh, sell, and then and then move forward that way, rather than get yeah. with these schemes that were, were relatively untested. Um, not to say that, you know, I, I don't know what's going to happen um, with, with, with how this play out. I am following a few of the accountants involved on LinkedIn, seeing, seeing what's happening with that. But it's it's hard to know how that's all going to play out. I guess it's up to the HMRC and and, and the people that are providing these schemes, you know. So, um, yeah, I mean, one, one of the issues with them for me was like, most most landlords are doing these these schemes that they're not informing the lenders like even that it's yeah. going to an LP. and mm-hmm. like a lot of lenders like they, they won't agree with it i mean i actually spoke to one of my lenders back in the day like it must have been like 2014 or whatever when when i first heard of these schemes being about um mm-hmm. i wanted to just check out a little bit more maybe, maybe it was a bit later than that maybe 2016 yeah, like 16, 17 yeah and i actually approached um, mortgage express and i asked them about it and i was like what what do you think of of, of these schemes like w- would you allow me would you give me permission if i was going to do it and or if i was going to transfer like the beneficial interest was another one um right. the beneficial of in- interest of the rents um and they just said they just said no like a straight no mm. um so, I think the main reason people were doing it as well was to take advantage of what were low interest rates as well at the time. But now with these with these base rate rises, the the, the actual rate of interest you're paying on these personal mortgages is actually really high anyway. So I'm not sure yeah. what the actual genuine benefit is at the moment for being part of these schemes. But yeah, we'll have to see how it how it plays out. And going back to this whole kind of um selling issue, you know, if Say, for example, you've refurbed the property. Now, that property we were talking about um, in, um, in in Northwest London that we were selling, you know, the refurb costs for that were, if, if I, I'd imagine if we did the refurb for that today or in the last year, we'd probably be paying double, right? So a lot of people are spending quite a lot of money on, on refurbishing properties and, and getting them up to scratch in a, in a very kind of inflationary environment. Which means that you have to sell at a certain price in order to, you know, make a little bit of money from the property as well. So there's 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 things like that coming into play as well. And obviously the cost of living crisis has meant that all of our expenses across the board have increased quite a lot over the last couple of years. So there's quite a few factors involved, which means that people still feel that they need to get a certain amount of money from their properties to sell. But the market is is kind of saying in the the opposite thing at the moment, you know. So, um, yeah, so, yeah, was, uh, yeah. Sorry, James, come. Yeah, there was a huge rise, wasn't there, in, in sort of commodity prices like around COVID time. Yeah, and a lot of it filtered into like materials for building, and bill costs went through the roof. Mm. Some of those uh, prices are dropping now. So, hopefully, over the next couple of years, we'll we'll see bill costs drop back down a, a bit. But I mean, a lot of developers and builders. Have, have stalled building at the moment for for those reasons and i mean we've looked at various build build plots and and sort of conversions over the over the last couple of years and it's really difficult to make them stack at the moment and um, with bill costs being so high yeah i mean even with the refurbs we've been doing you know i've been quite significantly underestimating the cost of them you know, over the refurb with the refurbs we've been doing over the last year or so, 
they've ended up being like kind of 30, 40 percent over what we were expecting, you know. And that's just the yeah. way it is. A lot of it is labor. Labor's been, you know, labor's been a big, a big kind of there's been big I mean, it's across the board, right? It's labor, labor and material cost. Yeah. But it's it's a case which, of- which is why, which is why we, <laughs> our new strategy now is do no refurbs and 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 sell stock, sell some of the cash deals that we buy straight through auction and just let somebody else do the refurbs, yeah. take a small margin. Um because you know you, we're we're cutting down risks by number one limiting our exposure to the market, um, and number two, obviously with these refurb costs going way over, you know we're just taking a smaller margin. Let somebody else deal with the risk, um, and yeah, it's 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 a strategy that's working for us at the moment. Yeah, but we need to be very careful about how we price these properties because you know. Even though, yeah, we're still transitioning into the buyer's market, um, it's it's a lot harder to sell these days than than it was. So I was looking at some stats over the weekend, and um, even like the kind of the the, the heavyweight auctioneers are only selling about seventy percent of their stock at the moment. And you know, auctioneers should be pricing quite conservatively in order to kind of sell at auction. So you know, you are seeing um, sellers struggling quite a lot at the moment, you know, to, to kind of um, to get the prices they want. And often that requires a, a reduction in their pricing. So um, really to, to kind of get things moving, you need to be quite conservative with 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 what you're willing to accept um, yeah. in order to get to get to get what you you know, to get the sale moving, you know, um, and we've had to do so that. Ruben, would you say that th- this market is, is a good market for investors to be out there looking for deals? Oh, yeah, definitely. Definitely. But again, you know, it's just where I'm going back to the basics, you know, and 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 really looking at um the fundamentals, you know, um, and remembering that I was thinking the other day actually, um, even a 10% yield on a single let, I'm not even sure that if that's a great, a great deal um at the moment, when you think about all your extra costs. I mean, maybe if the property is ready to go. And well, I mean, if you're paying probably what, like six, six and a half percent um, interest rate, yeah, I mean, that's realistically where rates are for buy to let mortgages right now, right? So, yeah, I mean, maybe if you don't have, um, you know, you don't have to do that much work to the property and you've got a property that's ready to go, it, w- it would work, but you know, yeah, it's, it, it depends well, where they are as well, right? Like, a yeah, 10% in London is a, is a lot different to a 10%. Yield in, in Blackpool. Oh yeah, yeah, ten percent in London any day. I think you know. Um, no offense to any of the Blackpool investors out there. <laughs> yeah, but uh, it's a, it's a special place, Blackpool. I think. Yeah. Why do you think that yeah. is in places like Blackpool? What do you think's happened there? Well, it well, just it, it seems to be. I don't know. I mean, we get a lot of stock in, in Blackpool. There's a lot of investor activity up there. A lot of landlords kind of think they can go into Black Blackpool, buy a few terraced houses, and and convert them to HMOs, mm-hmm. um, and then they find out a few months down the line that they've got a few junkies living in there, yeah, and quite. they're not getting the rent that they thought they would. Um, it's it's a difficult market. I mean, obviously there are people who make money there. Um, High unemployment, it's, yeah. It's, a, it's one of these declining towns, right, where, yeah. like you said, high unemployment, high crime rate. Um, there's a lot, of, a, a, lot, a lot of oversupply of investment properties and landlords there. And, yeah, it's, it's, it's a difficult market to, to make work. Well, obviously, every market, there's, you know, there is opportunity there. And we've also witnessed people, like, flipping properties in Blackpool and making money that way, you know? Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's all possible if you buy at the right price, I think, you know? There's, there's yeah. opportunities in every market, but Blackpool, I think you need to be super competitive. It's similar areas, you know, in the Northeast and, 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 and areas like that where there are opportunities, but it's almost a different ball game. You know, you've got to really kind of know your market and know that there is arguably an oversupply of properties up there. So you've just got to work work according to the parameters that you, that you have you know um yeah so um if what would you suggest if 
let's 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 take a few different scenarios here. So let's say you're um, you know, you've owned you maybe own one property and you're looking to sell in the current market. We'll, we'll take, let's go for that angle and then we'll take an angle from a from a landlord. So let's start with with someone that's you know got a property and they want to sell it on the open market. What would you suggest that they do at the moment? Like what kind of steps would you say would you say that they should they should, uh, they should take? Um, you know, to, to get yeah, out, I mean, to get a, their firm offers on the table. Yeah, I mean, obviously they could get a few estate agencies, uh, estate agents to come out, like usually we'd say three. Um, you know, get, I mean, if you can't do the valuation yourself, and bear in mind, like there's plenty of online resor- resources that you can use, mm-hmm. um, like house prices and, and right move to sort of get an idea of what properties are selling for in your, in your area. Mm-hmm. Um, when you do look at right move, though, you've got to remember that some of these um some of the prices on there, like the properties might have been on the market for a long time, or you know, their asking prices are not sale prices. Mm. But but generally the most important thing is to price the property well. So obviously get some estate agents, use your own sort of due diligence and try and work out what the market value is. If you've no idea how to do that, you could use a middle value of the three estate agents, maybe as a starting point. Um, list the property. Um, if there's been no interest, like no viewings in the first week, I wouldn't waste time. I'd, I'd adjust um, the price straight away. Um, obviously, for if you're, let, let's say, a developer trying to sell a property that you just refurbed, we would always say to stage it. Um, stage and furniture like really helps to get sort of the top price that you can get mm. um, as well as move it to a quicker so for us home staging is a no-brainer um, but I would say generally um, for selling houses the most important thing is the price if you're getting no viewings um, adjust the price as quick as possible if you're getting a lot of viewings they're getting to the property and then there's deciding no then it's usually something wrong with the property um, so then maybe you need to look at, you know, is there work that you could do to the house to maybe ma- make it more saleable? Um, what's turning the viewers off? What's the feedback being like? Make sure that your estate agent um, is getting feedback from all your viewers um, and, and feeding that back to you in real time. Yeah, um, I, would, I would add to that, James, that, uh, you know, it's also worth bearing in mind the condition of your property, where it's positioned on the street. Um, how your property compares to others and taking a realistic view on that. So, you know, it's easy to kind of compare your property to, you know, number 34 up the road, let's say, um, which may have had a full refurb done, may have a big garden, may have more curb appeal. Um, and that's the reason why it's sold for a higher price. But try and be realistic about where your how your, your property is positioned on the market. If you haven't touch the property in terms of you know putting in a new kitchen a new bathroom you know you know even kind of decorating it for for quite some time you're putting the property on the market as is then you need to be prepared for buyers coming in to look at your property and saying to themselves well i'm going to have to spend x y and z on all of these things and factoring that into their price um and that's you know when we're speaking to to sellers every day that's what we need to kind of we often need to try and explain that to them. It's quite a hard thing to do at the best of times. Um, and I was going to ask about the landlords as well. A lot of the landlords we speak to, um, it's funny because you would have thought they would have understood this factor, but they, they expect to get the full market value of the property with a tenant in situ. So, you know, they're receiving yeah. X amount of money for their property um, in rent. Um, but they still want to get the full market value. And we have to kind of explain to them, look, you need to vacate the property in order to be able to sell it because otherwise the the, the pool of buyers you're going to have is only going to be other landlords. And they're primarily yeah. going to be looking at the yield of the property. They're not going to be looking at, you know, what the property's worth on the open market. You might get one or two who might say, okay, well, I'll just carry on renting it. But even then... Well, not yeah, I mean, the, 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 other thing, the other thing about that is, I mean, it was a selling... House, houses with tenants was always difficult, but it's even more difficult now with the way that interest rates are and with the Section 24 rules. Mm-hmm. Um, there's there's less demand than, than ever, I would say, for tenanted properties. Mm-hmm. Um, and if you do want to sell a tenanted property, you, you can sell it, 
but you just need to know that you need to take a hit on the price. Um, I mean, there will be landlords that would buy it, but I would say typically you'd want to be at least 15% below the market value mm. um, to, to get it sold. Um, and then eventually and selling with vacant possession as well. So you need to be able to say to the tenant that you... Well, no, I'm, I'm saying to sell a tenant at... Like, oh, okay, with a tenant remaining. Yeah, yeah would need to be sort of 85% tops of, of, of the true market value. And, yeah. and I'm saying, t- you know, 85% tops, or so maybe even less than that. Mm-hmm. Obviously, it will depend on the rent um, that that property is getting. Um, there are some landlords I know who look down to look to sort of lease options as well as, as a way to dispose of tenant properties. And that can work. Um, but again, you need to find sort of investors who, you know, are, are looking to take on those properties. Maybe they've got a higher purpose that they can get a higher rent on lease options. But generally for us, if we sell tenanted properties, they're generally going by auction and sort of minimum 15% below market value. Yeah, I mean, occasionally we're able to kind of work something out where we can sell the property with with vacant possession. So the landlord can get the rent right up to the point of exchange and completion. Um, That is possible, but it's just quite a tricky one because if a tenant remains in a property, um, they don't necessarily have to let viewers in, you know? So yeah. we've had experience of that, right? Where where like we've taken on a property and the landlord has said, yeah, like the t- I have a great relationship with the tenant, he's paying paying rent. And then it comes to us doing viewings and suddenly the the, the tenant is oh, yeah. just not communicating and, and doesn't doesn't let anyone in. Yeah. So, so it's, it's really tricky. it's a hard one again because yeah, vacating the property, you're not gonna get be getting income, you know, from the property. So it's yeah, again, it's a difficult one. You know, yeah. so up and James have been through that situation where, and then obviously with with the market being slow, you're you're waiting for a longer time period to to actually sell and exchange completely unless you're selling for auction, you know. But then you're taking a bit more of a hit. So if you want to sell in the open market and maximise the value you get, really what you need to do is vacate the property and probably plan for about six months where you're not going to be getting any any rent and you're probably going to be paying you know, obviously the higher rate of interest at the moment, um, unless you've, you've agreed a, a decent deal with your mortgage a few years back, you know. But um, yeah, it's, uh, it's definitely a, a tough one, but I think ultimately worth vacating the property, I think, to, to, to maximise the price you'll get, you know, because you're just opening up. The yeah, I would, just say, I would just say in conclusion, um, definitely at the moment, it's, it's a tricky market. Mm. Um, I mean, there are opportunities uh, to buy, I mean, we're we're seeing sort of good discounts on properties that we're buying. So um, if you can get out there and you can make lots of offers and you can get sort of motivated sellers and um, to contact you, and um, then there are opportunities. Yeah, um, you can make money in an up, down, or sideways market. So you know, proactive investors are out there; they're making money. Um, and these sort of conditions, like when the market is slow, when it's there's a bit of uncertainty in the market and um, you know th- there are opportunities there so for sure for sure if, if you're out there you can, you can find them okay that's great all right well uh, we'll wind things up for today um and yeah if anyone wants to contact us we're both on linkedin james Durr, um and i'm ruben selvin eigen so feel free to, uh, to drop us a line on linkedin if you want to chat uh for whatever reason um we also run the uh, the uh, property investors and developers group, which has got I think about nearly seventy thousand members now. So feel free to visit us on there and drop us a message. And um, yeah, please like and subscribe. Um, and yeah, we look forward to uh, talking again next week. Thanks, guys. Thanks a lot. Bye.